Welcome, my name is Guido van der Graaf and we're here with CBI's tutorials on how to make a successful tourism website. This is part 3 and I'll explain you what technical elements you need to guide a visitor to a booking. So you set your strategy, you selected what kind of content you want, now it's time to create a website that sells. And basically the most important things that you need to know about having a good website is it should be super visual so use great pictures and videos and it should be simple to consume use simple languages and use a very easy to use navigation system to make a clear, easy to use website that sells, you first need to set your objectives of the website. And you basically also do that in your strategy. You select the content. Um, and then if you know that it's handy to create a sitemap, which is a kind of a visual overview of all the different pages that you need on your website. And then you have to ask yourself, am I going to do this with a web developer, an agency that builds a website for you? Or am I going to do this on a platform on website builders, which are ready to make a ready made websites where you can choose uh, the teams, but you don't have to start from scratch. You can still use also an agency, um, but you don't have to uh, customize your whole website. To give you some pointers, there are several platforms um, that can make these websites, uh, these uh, so-called site builders. Uh, they are all around 30 euros, at least the ones that I uh, show to you. You have uh, Spring Nest from uh, South Africa. Um, so here, so quickly, you will kind of see the prices here, so international price. And then we see this is around $30. And the same counts for, for example, Vacation Labs. And then we have uh, Tashi, which is also an OTA and a little bit different but also uh, in, in that area is uh, a bokong from the TripAdvisor. So um, here there, there are more of these kind of platforms around. You can also think about a non-tourist platform like a Wix or maybe a Webflow um, but uh, the, the thing is you don't necessarily need to work anymore with uh, a self hosting product so which might might make it much more easier for you to deal with technology if we look at examples there we see that beyond boundaries from Myanmar who was in the CBI program had a website with a uh, vacation uh, labs so the system is already there the only thing that they are doing is they're putting the content in though with vacation lab you also need to ask for a little bit customization if you want for example um, a unique selling points look as visual as Beyond Boundaries has done here. Bhutan Swallowtail was made with Spring Nest, also a ready-made template. So what you need to do is you need to put in your pictures. Of course, you need to put in your text, but then the system is creating a nice homepage for you. So you need to think about what kind of content, what kind of videos, how do I want to tell my marketing message? But the system, system is helping you to present it. And there are also nice integrated add-ons, like for example, a live chat or your reviews from TripAdvisor are pulled in. But you could also say, okay, I have special offers and add those special offers and they come here nicely on the tab. And then there are pre-made contact forms. Um, you can add your blocks here. And there is an itinerary builder where you can show the itineraries that you have and then um, yeah, the system makes sure that it's presented in a nice way. In this section we want you to learn some design requirements that are necessary to have a successful website. And the first design requirement is that your website should be easy to use. And Nepal Sanctuary Tracks is an excellent example. Why? Because they have not many um, uh, menu bottoms and they focus their menu bottoms on the most important target group that they sell to schools. So they don't want to show everything they do, but they 
prefer the schools to click on the school track so that they, they have the highest success with the clients that they actually want. So don't have too many manual buttons and think about who your main persona is, what are your most important products to sell because your menu is the first step to guide them there. The other design element is that it should be easy to get into contact with you. And Dynasty Ethiopia Tours is doing that nicely. For example, you can WhatsApp them in one click with this button. They have a nice call to action. Inquire us about our trip. They have their phone number and email address at the top of their website. So it's very easy to get into contact with this company. Another way to make your menu easy is to use visual elements in your menu. And Tesfa Tours is doing that nicely. That's called a mega menu. And it works especially well on a desktop. So if you're a B2B company and you know your clients are uh, most of the time looking at your website on an office through a desktop, then a mega menu could be really interesting. Because what happens, I click here on Tours and then I get immediately a visual representation of highlights of certain tours. So that could help. And if I then click on tracks or short trips, I get some idea of what I can already expect when I click on that page. So the communication goes faster, makes it easier for me to get to the right trip. And last, an element that really is helpful to make your website easier to use is the footer and if we look here at the footer of candelaria tours then what you see is they help them to um, lead people back to their most important pages and their most important products but also to get easy into contact with them and links to their social media and if you forgot who they are um, a quick intro of about us a very important task of your website is that you guide your visitors to a next step. That could either be another page, but it could also be your contact form, a subscription to your newsletter or your booking form. And the CBI document, how to be successful online, even gives you suggestions for different call to actions for different parts of the sales funnel. Is somebody in the awareness phase? Tell them to watch a video of your top product. Is somebody already in the booking phase? Let them book online, maybe with some discount. A good example of great use of call to actions on a homepage is Mia Marcello. And you already see the call to actions coming back in their uh, menu. As you hear at the top, inquire or here, uh, contact us. Also note uh, the contrast so that it's easy to spot, but they also use their website as a door to go to the deeper laying content. And on the, in every block, they do a short introduction that tells something about what they want to uh, promote, in this case, something about the company. And then there is a call to action that leads them, in this case, to the About Us page to learn more. And they do that for every block. So here they have their future journeys and the itineraries that they prefer to sell. And then you can click further to see them. But if there are other itineraries that you want to see, you can click on view more. They have a call to action for their tailor-made journeys. Um, uh, you can uh, click on their local experiences. And so uh, they give the best local experiences to immediately click to, but they have more than you can click to um, more. Um, they show their unique selling points. Um, if you click more, you go to the white shoes about us page. There's the block of the proof, and eh? there's the testimonials, eh? and the block that leads you to their blocks. So they really choose use their homepage as a door with different blocks, and each block has a call to action to lead the customer deeper into the website leading them one step further in the sales funnel towards a booking.